The city of Minneapolis doing battle with Uber and Lyft. So here's a look at what's happened so far. First, the city council passed a minimum wage for drivers. The mayor vetoed it, and today the council overrode that veto. The Minneapolis City Council dropped a bombshell, deciding drivers need to earn as much as the local minimum wage of $15.57 an hour. That's got Lyft and Uber in a twist, calling the ordinance a deal breaker and setting the stage for their exit on May 1st, strong arming the city of Minneapolis in a shocking power move. Lyft and Uber, the giants of ride hailing, are planning to hit the brakes and leave the city. Why? Well, it's all down to money, specifically, how much drivers should be getting paid. This move could flip the transportation scene in Minneapolis upside down, leaving riders and drivers with a ton of questions. So let's dive into this roller coaster of ride hailing politics and see what's driving this dramatic turn of events. Will this ruin the Minneapolis gig economy? If Lyft and Uber make their exit, the landscape of transportation in Minneapolis could shift dramatically. This move could leave a gaping hole in the daily commute and travel routines of thousands. The departure of these ride-hailing giants might open doors for new players in the market, like Move, which is gearing up to offer a similar service with potentially better terms for drivers. The discussion isn't just about ride availability, it's a broader conversation about the gig economy and fair wages. The proposed rates by the Minneapolis City Council aim to align driver earnings with the local minimum wage, advocating for a fairer compensation model. Yet, the ride-hailing companies argue that these rates could inflate costs for riders, affecting service affordability and accessibility. The potential exit of Uber and Lyft is causing ripples across the community. Some see it as a stand against the exploitation of drivers, while others fear the practical implications for mobility, especially for those relying on these services for transportation. The situation in Minneapolis is a microcosm of the ongoing global debate on the gig economy, worker rights, and sustainable business practices in the digital age. This has turned into a tug of war between the ride-hailing giants and the city council. Let's get into the nitty-gritty of what's been cooking in Minneapolis. The city council, aiming to boost driver earnings, passed a new rule saying that ride-hailing companies like Lyft and Uber gotta pay their drivers more. We're talking $1.40 per mile and 51 cents per minute, or at least five bucks a ride. Whichever hits higher, sounds fair for the drivers, right? But here's the twist. Lyft and Uber aren't having it. They say this new rule is way off base, making their business model in Minneapolis a no-go. Lyft was straight up, calling the ordinance deeply flawed and warned that it would make their operations unsustainable in the city. Meanwhile, Uber, echoing the sentiment, also flagged the potential shutdown. They're not just blowing smoke, either. These ride-hailing bigwigs are serious about pulling out when the law kicks in on May 1st. And it's not just a Minneapolis thing. This could ripple out, affecting nearby areas too. Now, the council's decision didn't come out of thin air. They're looking at places like Seattle and New York, where similar moves didn't exactly crash the ride-hailing scene. But in Minneapolis, the stakes are high, with both sides of the argument digging in their heels. The drivers, especially those from the East African community, have been vocal about needing that wage bump to make a decent living. Even the drivers are not all on the same side in this struggle. The streets of Minneapolis are buzzing with reactions from all corners. Drivers like Farhan Badal, who's been cruising for Uber and Lyft since 2018, are at a crossroads. Farhan's been making ends meet driving folks around, from busy airport runs to daily commutes, and now he's facing a future where his main gig might just vanish. He's not alone. Many drivers share his concern worried about how they'll juggle life and bills without this flexible work option. On the flip side, there's a strong voice from the driver community pushing for this change. They argue it's high time they earned a wage that reflects their hard work, pointing out that driving isn't just about ferrying people around, it's about ensuring they do so safely and efficiently. The city council's decision has sparked a heated debate pitting the need for fair wages against the fear of losing these vital services. Lyft and Uber, meanwhile, aren't sitting quietly. They're rallying for a statewide law to override the city's decision, fearing a fair hike could drive riders away. As the deadline looms, the tension is palpable, with drivers, riders, and city leaders all tangled in a high-stakes standoff 
over the future of ride hailing in Minneapolis. This isn't the first time we see this conflict in the US. Looking at the broader picture, the Minneapolis saga isn't happening in a vacuum. Other cities like Seattle and New York City have navigated these choppy waters, setting minimum pay rates for ride hailing drivers. In these cities, despite initial pushback, Uber and Lyft continued operations, suggesting that while the companies protest higher costs, there's room for adaptation and negotiation. In Seattle, the implementation of the Fair Share Ordinance, which increased driver compensation, was closely watched. Critics feared it would lead to decreased demand and higher prices for consumers. However, those drastic market shifts didn't fully materialize. Drivers and experts noted that while there were adjustments, the market remained robust, and ride-hailing services continued to be a staple in the city's transportation ecosystem. This scenario provides a crucial context for Minneapolis. It demonstrates that while ride-hailing giants like Uber and Lyft may threaten to exit markets over wage ordinances, such exits may not be permanent, or may not even occur if there's a middle ground to be found. In Austin, Texas, after Uber and Lyft left due to regulatory issues, they eventually made their way back, showing that market dynamics and regulatory environments are fluid and subject to change. Minneapolis stands at a crossroads with its unique economic and social fabric. The city must weigh the benefits of ensuring fair wages for drivers against the potential risks of losing these essential services which many residents rely on for daily transportation. The outcome in Minneapolis could set a precedent for other cities grappling with similar issues, making it a critical moment for the future of ride-hailing services and gig economy regulations. Can Uber and Lyft overturn the city council? The political and legislative landscape surrounding the Uber and Lyft exit in Minneapolis is tense and complex. The city's decision to enforce higher wage standards for ride-hailing drivers has sparked a fierce debate across various sectors. Uber and Lyft have threatened to leave, pushing for state-level legislation that could override the city's ordinance. Governor Tim Walz expressed deep concerns about the ride-hailing giant's potential departure, emphasizing the widespread reliance on their services, including by people with disabilities and those needing safe late-night transportation. The state government faces pressure to intervene, possibly by proposing legislation that balances fair driver compensation with the operational needs of Uber and Lyft. Meanwhile, Minneapolis City Council members are in the spotlight, facing the tough choice of standing firm on their decision or seeking a compromise to prevent the ride-hailing services from leaving. This situation underscores the ongoing struggle to reconcile the gig economy's flexibility with the need for worker protections and fair wages. The Minneapolis scenario is a critical case study in the broader national conversation about the gig economy and the regulation of ride-hailing services. The outcome could influence future policies in cities across the U.S., making it a landmark case in the evolving narrative of digital platform regulation and labor rights. Transportation costs are about to soar to new heights in the city. In the middle of the ongoing debate and potential exit of Uber and Lyft from Minneapolis, the city's residents and drivers are vocal about their concerns and hopes. The ordinance's supporters argue that it's a step towards ensuring fair wages for drivers, many of whom are from marginalized communities. They believe this could set a precedent for better labor standards in the gig economy. On the other side, critics worry about the immediate practical implications, especially for those who rely heavily on these services. The fear is that removing Uber and Lyft from the city's transportation equation could lead to increased costs and decreased accessibility for riders particularly affecting low-income individuals and those with disabilities who depend on these services for mobility. The city council and state legislators are now in a delicate position, needing to balance the demands for fair driver compensation with the broader transportation needs of the city's residents. The decisions made in the coming weeks could redefine the future of ride-hailing services in Minneapolis and potentially influence similar discussions in other cities. The fight of who is going to fill the gap as Minneapolis braces for the potential exit of Uber and Lyft, there's a buzz around what will fill the void. This isn't just about catching a ride, it's about how a city adapts when major players in the gig economy hit the road. The spotlight's on new kids on the block like Move, geared up to take the wheel with promises of fair pay for drivers and competitive fares for riders. 
the plot thickens with local startups and driver-owned cooperatives eyeing the gap, ready to redefine ride-hailing in Minneapolis. These emerging players aren't just looking to fill a service gap, they're aiming to shift the narrative, advocating for better treatment and earnings for drivers. The city's ride-hailing scene is at a crossroads, with the potential to set new standards for how gig economy workers are valued and compensated. In this unfolding drama, the actions of Minneapolis could become a landmark case, influencing how cities and companies navigate the complexities of the gig economy. It's more than a local issue. It's a glimpse into the future of work, worker rights, and urban transportation. As the deadline approaches, all eyes are on Minneapolis to see how this showdown will reshape the gig economy's landscape. Wrapping this up, folks, Minneapolis is at a turning point with the Uber and Lyft drama. It's more than just a local tiff, it's a glimpse into the future of work in our fast-paced digital world. How this plays out could change the game for gig workers everywhere, not just in Minneapolis. So what do you think? Is this a step forward for fair wages, or will it drive these app giants away for good? If you want to keep tabs on this unfolding story and get more of the gritty, in-depth analysis you crave, hit that subscribe button. Stay in the know, join the conversation, and let's dive deep together into the stories that shape our world. Don't miss out. Subscribe now and be part of the journey as we uncover the impacts and evolutions of our global gig economy.